A wolf shifter attacked her, Chiga spoke, while sitting on the sofa in Jungkook's office. Now the question is, why would a wolf shifter attack her? She has the powers of Dalila. If that was for temptation, it was different, but he clearly came for a kill. Chiga continued, his eyes were blue and he was a skilled one, like a trained assassin, because I found a few knives in your room, but that's clear. She gave him a hard time. Chiga spoke proudly to which Jungkook smacked. Why would anyone want her dead? Jungkook spoke, drowning deep in his thoughts. Well, the containers of the children was taken care of and they are now in a safe place. We are trying to find their families. Jimin informed because he had the information about that. He was so tense due to wine otherwise he would have gone there and taken care of the matter with his own hands. Anything else about the wolf? Jungkook asked Sh Sugar and he shook his head. He didn't shift back to his human form but one thing that was weird was that he knew that her security system and must have been following us. He sedated all the gods and hacked the cameras and also he made sure we weren't home when he struck. Sugar spoke and Jenkins noted his monster gets feral over the thought that someone even thinks about hurting her in his territory. The vein in his neck burst and cool he cracked his neck from side to side. Once I get my hands on this mastermind. I'll show him the real hell. Jungkook whispered in his deep, psychotic tone and smacked after turning around and leaning his front over his table while his palm rested on the edge of the table. His half-finished gloss, a whiskey rest there and he toasted it back in his throat. He loved the bone and the red he's seeing when he gets his hand on every single man who's trying to hurt her. Humming a song, she brushes her wet hair. She looked at her lips and a bruise foaming from his nipping was evident. He kissed like that. How would he? Nah, don't, don't go there. She shook her head to shake her wild thoughts. Suddenly the light went out. She gasped. She somehow found a candle and lit it up. She went out of his room. In the hallway, it was dark, and the only source of light was moonlight from outside. A wave of goosebumps crossed her body. Suddenly, the silence was too loud. The thumping of her bare feet tapping the cold marble floor was too loud. She could hear the blood flowing in her veins. Her belt, her became heavier, the thin material didn't so little to hide them in babies. She kept on walking, but suddenly she was pushed to the wall with the hand around her throat. Her monster kicked in, but calmed in an instant when she recognized the hands and then the addicting and intoxicating in incense hit her nostrils. One hand around the wrist attached to her throat. She brought the other hand to the wrist as well. Her eyes were closed and when she opened them again, the brown orb stared at her with so much lust and something achingly. She couldn't understand but she could feel it. It's like it's coming in waves and consuming her body. She could feel her resistance dropping and consumed by him and only him. The temperature rose and she felt his body less than an inch away. She felt like... Even if she breathed it, she would meet the heat of his body, his delicious lips so inviting. Her eyes changed and she shifted. The petite Dalila ready to submit as she kneels in front of him. Jungkook saw her kneel. They say it's really hard to get a Dalila actually submit. There is my Dalila on her knees for me and only me. Her golden dust falls as if she was a fairy, but she's a Dalila, meant to tempt, but a tease, because not everyone can get a Dalila. I held her chin and lifted it up until she met my eyes. You're such a little tempting thing, aren't you? Jungkook whispered, growled. She blinked as she desperately waited for his command. I have plenty of women, thousands were on their knees for me, but 
never once was this beautiful, never once made my monster feral to claim her as his, never made me lose my grip. She's meant to be where she is, right where she is now, for me, that's time to be mine. The moment she takes it, she is mine, bound to mine. No one take her away, not even herself, take out my... He commanded, his authoritative tone jolted her. She stared at him as her petai throb, throat bob. She didn't oblige and just stared at him, tilting her neck. He held her chin roughly. Now you deaf, Zora? He asked. She smirked and spoke. Make me. He was taken aback by the retort. He held her hair from the roots. She winced. Now. He growled when she looked at him with the uh, with the pain etched in her scalp. For spice, Instagram link in the description. You little deviant, he chuckled, driving deeper. Her grew as his grunts. She came trembling in his arms and he followed her. She stood being in the coffee table and realized she was alone. She opened her eyes. The room was dark and a faint light from outside, illuminating the dark room. She was disoriented. She just come, but then the in her say something else. Suddenly the door opened and Jungkook entered with his coat in his hand. He threw it on the bed and rolled his neck. Where were you? She asked, sitting up on her elbows. In the office, he replied. But you were? She gets silent. You were what? He asked. She looked at him and then shook her head. He shrugged, but a uh, intoxicating incense made him halt. Azora. Denko called her in his whiskey and voice. She looked at him. Her long lashes fluttered as she looked at him. Are you being naughty behind my back? He asked. The whiskey scent settled deep in her coat. She stared at him. He took a step forward. She didn't move, didn't breathe, just stared at him. She didn't know when he was there and then hovering over her. Did you sleep well? His deep timber was making her crazy. She was too nervous, but he was also so intimidating. His warm palm rested against her heated cheek. You okay, baby? He whispered. Last night you passed out. The words left his lips and a faint memory of a deep chuckle and someone cleaning her hit her. She bit her bottom lip. Keep biting the lip and I'll be senseless. She heard his voice but she didn't see his lips moving. Her eyes widened. This is us now. We can communicate through our senses, he told her, and her mouth fell open. And also, I had all of what you were thinking earlier. He told her, and her cheeks heated. He chuckled, and his deep chuckle made her want to whine. Why she didn't get to see that side of him earlier? His head descended, and his lips met hers. She kissed him back as her hands clutched on his shirt. They kissed and it turned into a spicy station. She came as a desire but turned into an obsession. The lust and desire, I can't get enough when it comes to her, a week since I tasted her. Every, th every time I feel the urge to have more, every time I fall back myself but I can't seem to, she's so, 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 I can't. I know that. That princess of Delilah had made a mess in my head. Temptation oozes from every pore of her body. Every time I see her, I feel a need to be close to her and have my hands on her or my lips on her. My childhood was not the most pleasant. I saw my parents bled to that. I saw them making deals with devils so that they could save me. I saw them leaving me alone with my own eyes. I saw their souls leave their bodies. The blood that splattered over my face when they cut their throats. I remembered it so vividly.
The god and I was playing in that, reading the newspaper, mom making tea for him. Both had their chat, and then I saw a car, a black sedan. Few men got out of the car and entered the house. I was little, far from them. As I reached my parents, where they were on their knees, men behind them holding their knives to their throats. The man whose face was covered with a mask held me and caressed my hair. My parents begged him to spare me and I frowned at them. But then in a flick there was a waterfall of red and red everywhere. I saw them as they stared at me. I stared back as they became ashes and flew away. The thing that printed on my heart was the snake, the snake on his ring, the snake that thought he was veiled, but the snake that had him unveiled. I left and survived for revenge. The emotions of caring and softness were alien to me, but she has awoken that fire now. If I have to force her to keep it going, then I will. I came to love the burn of it and the mark that it's leaving there. I will never love her. Love is nothing to me. She is my obsession, my territory, my submissive, my Dalila. She is mine as well, always born to be mine, brought to be mine, trained to be mine, trained to be mine. It's time to be mine. To be continued.